today I'm going to go over creating a level uh, using Blender. Uh, just to give you an idea of what we're going to create, today we're going to create um, a tunnel, which is going to have some basic props, uh, lighting. Um, it's not going to be a full level because making a full level takes a long time, so uh, I'm just going to give you the basic information you need to create a level, and then you can go and create your level. Alright? the game as you can see uh, 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 you can uh, of course you can save this using save default settings uh, so I have this on uh, game um, so we're gonna get rid of this cube and add a plane so this plane will be the basic mesh uh, use s x to scale on the x-axis you should know this from my basics tutorial as bad as the sound quality might be. So this will be our basic plane. This will be our, our platform. We're going to extend um, the level, the walls and stuff from that. So now uh, switch to edit mode. Select the uh, line there. And what, I, what we want to do is extend, uh, make it make a slant, make it slant downwards gradually. So extend, extrude using the E key and drag it downwards. I should switch to uh, side view and orthographic right there. Okay, so we, I want it to be a smooth. Try not to make it too steep because it would cause glitches. So just keep pressing extrude and moving it. Um, okay, so here uh, notice that, it, okay, so I select this. Notice that it selected only the vertices on my side. Um, this is because I'm selecting in solid mode. If you okay, just watch this. This is on solid mode. I, if I use the B select, it's just going to select this vertice. So you have to go on wireframe to be able to select uh, vertices that you don't see uh, directly in front of you. So now, as you can see, two vertices selected. So uh, I just want to make this look smoother. It's kind of pointy. Okay. Now uh, I want to select this obviously in uh, wireframe. And I want to make this completely flat. So what I'm going to do is I will have it selected and extrude. Don't right, left click, right click to return it to its initial position. So, and then you can move it on the Y axis. As you can see, it makes it flat. Okay, so this will be the ending, the flat ending. Uh, it's too, uh, it's too thin. Um, this is protective, I like perspective view, as I said, um, I'm just going to make this wider. Alright, so now that it's wider, uh, we can start adding some details to it. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to move this backwards, extrude backwards, because our player needs some space. Uh, there are going to be some props there in the background, so we don't, uh, behind the player, sorry, so we don't want it to uh, block off or make it too small. Uh, now we are going to add details, control R for a loop cut, and use your mouse wheel to increase the number, I'm going to go with 4. Uh, this is just for adding basic details, because your, because caves never have straight, um, straight uh, sides. So I'm going to go to top view orthographic, and I am going to try to make it look more random, drag it as you can see, just move it around with the G key. And since I'm an orthographic, it's only going to move on the Y and X axis, no Z axis. So here it gives our level a more random look, more natural look, because if it doesn't look too natural, then the player is not going to be happy. He's just going to say that this game is not done properly, it's unrealistic. And I just thought of a change in design. I want to make this, uh, to make this tunnel uh, have a turn, make it on curve. So I'm just going to select the vertices and turn them, rotate. Uh, to try to make it look like a turn. Uh, obviously you should have your levels planned, especially if you're working on a serious game. You should have your levels planned ahead so that you don't waste time creating levels from scratch and not being satisfied. Uh, so I'm just going to complete my turn here. Okay, just going to select those last two vertices. Move them. I think this should be fine. There we go. Okay, so here we have our uh, slant and the curve. Now go back to top view, orthographic. 
I'm on wireframe just because I like wireframe and keep going with that keep giving it a random look alright so I'm just going to try to speed up here um, if this is for a game you should be as picky as possible not too picky obviously but you should be picky enough to make it look good uh, because the player will appreciate this. Now control R, mouse wheel, I need two, so I'm going to do that and drag it, make it look more natural. If it doesn't look natural, um, it's just going to be unrealistic. The player might not know that you didn't put in enough time to make it look natural, but he will know that it's unrealistic. That's what he's going to know for sure. So uh, I think this would be fine. Now, uh, what we want to do uh, is select the sides. Now notice if I select in vertex mode, uh, it selects every, it selects all the faces. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, and in face selection, uh, you select, uh, you select all the faces. So what we want to do is uh, select it using the line selection because this does not select the lines in the middle. So that means we're just going to be moving the lines. As you can see, face selects all faces. Uh, and vertex mode selects the lines in the middle, which we don't want. And this is why line selection is the optimal tool. Obviously, you can find this in my Blender Basics tutorial. Um, so we're going to select the lines and extrude them both at the same time so that it would have they would have the same height. So now I extrude it. You can see a change. Drag it upwards. There you go. There's your change. Okay. So here we have our basic wall. So this is a cave, of course, so it needs to have a ceiling that is not flat. So just extrude upwards. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to merge each of the two uh, uh, corresponding vertices together. Uh, merge at center to merge W merge center, as you just saw. W merge center. W merge center. Um, so you just want to repeat this process. I know it takes time, but it's a level for a game. No one said that games are created within uh, five minutes. You can't merge all at the same time, as you can see. That uh, creates a mess, and that's not the kind of mess we want to create. Um, we want the player to create the mess by destroying our world and adding destruction systems and stuff, but we don't want to mess up our world ourselves. Um, anyways, I, I digress. So keep merging. Um, keep going. Let me try to speed up. I could, uh, I'm gonna just teach you how to do this tunnel because I don't have the time. As you can see, it takes some time, so I don't have the time to create a full level. But with the methods that I'm gonna teach you, you should be able to create a full level. So now, as you can see, uh, I'm gonna write, uh, I'm gonna raise this up. Uh, now it looks more like a house from this view. A weird, um, improperly constructed house. So we're gonna loop cut and uh, create two loop cuts per side and what we're going to do is we're going to select those uh, lines uh, the lines from each side and drag it upwards to give it a more smooth look drag upwards and now it looks more smooth as you can see okay I'll drag that downwards uh, perfection is not something I would stress in tutorials but I would recommend it for full games Otherwise, your game would not have a good quality to it. Um, I'm going to move this upwards because it looks too... It makes it a bit... Because uh, it just makes it look more natural. Maybe... Scale, no, that's, that's going to ruin it. Okay. So I think this is fine. Um, as I said, I'm not going to stress details here. Uh, so, uh, this... There we have our basic cave. This is the gray block, as it's called, or uh, solid object without textures or anything. So we just want, if you notice, it's shaded, uh, each face is shaded individually, which makes it look pretty rough for a cave, and we don't want that. So we're going to shade smooth, W, shade smooth. And you can see the shading here becomes more, it becomes smooth, it becomes more natural. Um, it just helps. So we want, we want to change, uh, add a material to it. If there is no material there, you could select that, or you could add a new material. I'm going to change the intensity, make it brighter, because it looks better with the gray background. It's more visible. Okay, so here we have a basic mesh uh, textured mode, as you can see. 
has some shading in it. Um, uh, as you can see, the shading is pretty nice. Um, not the greatest shading, obviously, because this is an OpenGL. And the outside, if you haven't noticed, is transparent, while the inside is solid. And that that should be that should be what's happening. Um, because if the outside is rendered and the player is not really going to see it, then there's no use in rendering it, and it's only slowing down the game. So you should uh, make sure that the outsides are going to be uh, um, solid. If uh, your inside is, I mean, sorry, your outside is transparent, I'm just going to add more details to the walls, uh, just to make it look more bumpy. But we don't want to add too many details, because more polygon detail means more memory and uh, more processing, and we don't want to slow down our game. So just drag certain vertices randomly to make them look, uh, to make the cave look more natural, more bumpy. Um, if you're, if the inside of your cave is transparent and the outside is visible, you just need to select the faces that are invisible or the whole object if it's all flipped, uh, if the faces are flipped up. Uh, select it W and select flip normals, uh, which is going to change it, switch it so it should work. Okay, so I'm just going to continue with this. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to work too hard on this. Try not to make it too pointy because it wouldn't look too good. Um, take your time if on your uh, game levels. This is a tutorial, so I'm not going to take too much time. Otherwise, um, if this was actually for my game, I would have took way more time than I did in this tutorial. As I said, move it randomly to give it a random look. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to keep doing that. This wall looks a bit too neat for a cave. And mess isn't, isn't always that bad. So I'm going to move those around to make it look more natural. And doing this is, as I said, is better because it's detail, and detail is necessary in games to create a good game. Um, it's also more realistic. There's caves aren't smooth on the inside. Well, normally they're not. So you want to make it as uh, random looking as possible, as bumpy as possible. As I said, I'm not going to stress that in this tutorial because it's a tutorial. It's not a, an actual game. Okay. So I'm just going to try to speed this up because I'm way working way too slow here. I think it looks fine. Uh, there it is. Uh, yeah, as you see, the shading has changed a bit to make it look more bumpy. But of course, it's not the greatest shading, as I said, because this is not using GLSL. It's not using advanced shaders so, and shading. Um, it's pretty basic technology. Okay, so now the ground, we just want to make that look more smooth. It's Grounds and caves aren't always flat, so I'm going to drag it downwards. Okay, I think this is fine. Um, yeah, this should be fine. And now we are going to move to texture. So go to UV Editor, or you can switch there to UV, as you can see, switch from default to UV. Um, I just like to use uh, UV on the side. Um, we want to have a texture. Now we first the to add a texture to an object, you have to unwrap it. So if I select all the faces using the A key and click Unwrap, you can see it unwraps it. Blender unwraps the faces. It lays it out flat, and it makes it look round, which is not...